Good morning time, good evening time, good afternoon time, whatever the case may be in your part of the world. Crisscrossing wires, and uh, today I got something interesting for you. Uh, you know, I had did a video talking about uh, bypass batteries and battery fires as far as those bikes catching on fire in group rides from stock batteries or inexpensive batteries with the BMS's bypass and guys using high power controllers. I don't mean Savitons or anything like that, regular controllers. I mean stuff like BAC 4000s and above far drivers, anything capable of pulling uh, more than 200 amps of DC line amps, uh, you know, roughly 300 DC line amps and over Okay, and I also said the reason why those bikes were catching fire on group rides just like I said guys running high power controllers with batteries that aren't capable of Supplying that amount of current now most batteries stock batteries, you know You may bypass them if you have a controller that's exceeding that battery BMS rating maybe by 50 amps something like that but it's I should have also have stated in those videos you know you you can exceed them by a little more than that but you would only want to do something like that for perhaps race purposes only because a race is maybe 15 30 seconds at the most you do not want to bypass BMSs using high power controllers if you're going to be demanding a lot of current flow from those batteries for long periods of time. Because most of those batteries have 18650s. The average 18650 is only capable of 10 amps discharge, some 15 amp, 20 at the most, but 18650 10 to 15 amps discharge rate tops so you have guys with batteries 18650s 10p batteries so that's 10 cells that can comfortably discharge 100 amps comfortably and they're trying to extract up to 300 amps from those batteries for long durations in the summertime on long distance group rides those bypass batteries with small cells those cells are going to heat up because you're as i keep saying over and over to stress that point you're trying to get two and three times the current out of those cells all right so they heat up and eventually they get hot enough especially with it being summertime especially being enclosed in the battery compartment thermal runaway will happen without a doubt at some point may not happen the first time or the second time you may be lucky but at some point on one of those rides where you're demanding lots of power for a long time it's going to happen so i do real world tests on stuff because i happen to have stuff laying around where i can do tests now like this battery here uh i was getting ready to do a bypass on it once i wanted to see what the actual cells first thing you want to do when you bypass a battery is you want to see what kind of cells are actually in the battery what the battery can actually handle comfortably look the cells up see the discharge rate multiply that times however many p the battery is and you know what that battery can comfortably handle all right now being as though i knew i was going to bypass this battery for a little project that i'm working on uh i wanted to see and if the if the bms was going to actually do its job now on the label of this battery the bms said it was a hundred amp bms okay so how did i test that uh, I hooked it up to the beast. I disconnected the beast's battery system. I set the control, set my controller to 150 amps and said, let's see if it trips the BMS. 
okay now initially it didn't trip it so i rode a little while maybe like three or four minutes uh pulling 150 amps uh i even used my amp probe to see what i was actually pulling and uh yeah after about five minutes it tripped the bms and i was standing over there because this bms has a little beep tone you can hear it so this bms i'm not sure what type it actually is because it's in chinese whatever the case this bms is actually working and doing its job as it should i attempted to extract more than 150 amps and i mean well it's 100 amp bms i attempted to extract 150 amps and uh as you can see it tripped the bms all right so uh now what i was going to do actually i'm sorry i'm speaking wrong thing there's 150 amp bms and uh i went above 150 amps i went to 200 and then it tripped the bms all right my bad i talk about so many batteries and stuff and different batteries i forget sometimes say the wrong thing slip of the tongue but 150 amp bms at 200 amps it tripped it as it should that is a proper functioning bms uh i wanted to also do a test to try to overcharge it and see if that would uh trip it what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh cut this cap on tape open it up see if i can reset this bms uh by you know disconnecting the power and everything and reconnecting sometimes that will reset the bms's but that's the only way you can do it once that happens some of them have a little button uh in there that you can reset them uh some of them once some of them the bms uh it just blows the little diode or whatever they have in there controlling the current and once that blows that's it for the bms it won't work anymore that's usually the case uh that is that's a good bms as well because you shouldn't be able to reset it if you were doing something stupid that causing it to trip uh the average person if they can reset it they will continue to do something stupid so some of the bms's when they trip that's it done deal battery will not work anymore unless you you know remove the bms and put your leads directly to you know uh the main battery positive and the main battery negative um let's see let's see if uh if i can uh i should have i should really have uh a little razor knife or exacto knife or something but uh these scissors will work since i can see through this tape I know I'm not uh, shorting anything, uh, but this is really not the uh, best way to do it. I just so happen to have the scissors still, and too lazy to go get a, a knife. But uh, yeah, I was I was actually shocked. But this this is not really a super cheap battery. Uh, this battery actually had labels and everything on it. Uh, Chinese couldn't understand what they were. But, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of batteries that don't have labels, don't have anything in them. The super cheap batteries won't say a damn thing. But, uh, yes, I'm quite impressed that this BMS actually did its job. But uh, I'm not going to tell you that I've tested a few other batteries, cheap, cheap batteries, and uh, they did not, <laughs> they did not work. BMS didn't do what they were supposed to do, even charging them. I attempted to overcharge them, not extremely, but to the point where they should have tripped. You know, that's, that's the main thing you want a BMS to work for, uh, overcharging. Now, people wonder how batteries get overcharged, and I can tell you, uh, it happens accidentally all of the time. That is because people have more than one PEV. They may have a scooter, they may have a couple scooters, a couple skateboards, e-bikes and a scooter, whatever, and have different charges. 
different chargers. However, most chargers have one or two, three connectors. XT60s or, uh, damn, XT90s or the, uh, the other ones with the three prongs. I can't think of it right now, the term for those. But anyway, uh, chargers don't use a whole bunch of different connectors. A lot of them use the same one. And you can accidentally, when you have multiple PEVs, grab the wrong charger. Now you put a 72 volt charger on a 48 volt battery and guess what's going to happen? Yeah, it's definitely going to overcharge. Now, if the BMS is doing this job, as soon as you plug up that 72 volt charger, it should tri trip that BMS. However, if that BMS is not doing this job, you will plug up that charger, it will start charging, it, the BMS doesn't shut it down and those batteries will charge till they hit 48 volt battery when they hit 52.2 uh, and keep going past that the BMS doesn't shut it down a 72 volt charger the voltage is going to keep climbing when you get up around the uh, shoot 58 volts maybe in that range you have gone way way past uh the full on those batteries they will start getting hot start expanding uh eventually one of them's going to pop because the rest of them are hot once that first one pops pop 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 pop, pop just like a pack of fireworks and at that point you're in trouble now if you have seen a lithium battery catch on fire it's just not like it's a little flame no when these things burst they are intense it's like a flamethrower when one of those cells catches on fire it's like uh those uh those little firework things that used to uh the roman candles how the fire shoots out the end uh they're like roman candles and guess what is they come out the fire comes out with that intensity until all that energy is burned the bigger battery pack you have the more extreme that fire is going to be you got a big old 40 amp hour battery pack with 21 700s you are not going to extinguish that fire uh a fire extinguisher might uh you know uh, smother it temporarily until that extinguisher runs out when that extinguisher runs out guess what it's going to flame back up that fire is not going to subside until all the energy burns out of those batteries all right now some people try to you know at that point when it's already on fire yeah you can you can uh try to put it out with water at that point they say don't use water because lithium actually goes crazier with water. But if we're talking about a battery that's in thermal runaway, it's already a little too late for that. So I advise you, yes, get a hose with some water and you're going to have to keep water on that until all that energy is gone. Uh, disregard what they tell you about they say you don't use water. no nah, don't put water on lithium batteries that are not in thermal runaway because if they're not on fire and the water gets to the lithium it will ignite but if it's already on fire yeah put some water on that damn thing anyway guys uh as far as this let me show you if you're going to bypass this battery, let me see what we got over here. I really need my voltmeter. I'm pretty sure that is uh, positive battery voltage on that side. So this is all the grounds on this side. Most likely you would want to uh, put a jumper on these grounds. And what that would do is bypass the uh, BMS because one of these goes directly to negative terminal on this battery and uh, then it goes through the BMS if you put a jumper across then uh, you know it's actually bypassing the BMS because 
current is going to follow the path of least resistance and you dead short where the ground comes in and where the ground goes out uh, one of them goes out to your negative battery lead and the other one goes to the negative side of this battery so yep just by uh, just by putting the jumper across those will by bypass the BMS you're shorting the BMS basically and uh, at that point I would depending on if you're going to do completely I, I would I would leave the uh, charge side connected so anyway I really I would really want to remove the negative from off of the BMS and run it directly to the negative terminal on the battery that is the best way to do it sometimes you don't have that option because the negative side of the battery may be way over here and you might not want to take the entire battery apart as far as all the plastic side so you could basically just unsolder the negative terminals from the BMS and then connect them together